Thank you for inviting me uh, to speak on the mitre clip. Uh, it's actually a very boring topic, right? Um, worldwide, it is the most well-established transcatheter treatment option for mitral regurgitation. Whether Eberhardt calls it a, a band-aid or not, the band-aid will always be there. Okay. It's safe, it's effective, and it's durable in selected patients with degenerative functional MR. It has reduced morbidity and mortality in patients with functional secondary MR, and Greg will attest to that amazing trial that it was the only therapy that actually ever demonstrated mortality benefit. In the US, it has been approved only for high-risk primary MR, and there are now up to four generations, and there are going to be further generations, and there are ongoing clinical trials to expand the indication. So these are the 17 years of commitment of evidence to innovation with the MitoClip. And you can see there are over 59,000 patients studied. And what I want to focus on, you can see over here, in somewhere between 17, 18, and 19, 20, some important trials and registries that are going on. And I'm just going to speak about just a few of them. These are just the Abbott-sponsored manuscript trials, the real-world post-market registries, the expand registries, generating Gen 3 and Gen 4, the registries in different nations, India, China, and Korea, randomized studies comparing mitroclip versus transcatheter mitral valve replacement. You have the summit trial mitroclip versus Tendine. The other TMVR platforms are not willing to go against mitroclip. They're probably too scared. And then you have modifications of other therapies. Uh, like the triluminate trial for tricuspid. And then finally, expansion of indication repair MR, mitral valve versus surgical repair for intermediate risk, which I'm really going to speak about. So these are the ongoing trial not sponsored by Abbott, the mitral versus edge to edge class 2D and 2F Edwards, and then surgical repair versus transcatheter edge to edge repair primary MR, which I'm also going to speak about. So the expand registries have done quite well. They have shown that the changes in the generation of the mitoclip have actually led to an improvement in the safety as well as the efficacy. And the expand G4 is going very rapidly with 700 patients. When it comes to the summit trial, I just want to focus on the greens part, which is where you get patients with mixed or functional MR and they're clippable as well as can have a tendine valve they get randomized to tendine versus clip. And as you expect, guess where is the most of the exclusions, in the tendine arm or in the clip arm? Obviously in the tendine arm, okay? So this is just an example of where it goes. And this trial will, for the first time, demonstrate a difference with the transapical tower. So I think it's a brave study to do, but it's actually needed to be done. Now let's talk about expansion of integrin. Mitoclip for intermediate moderate surgical risk patient, is, there, is this the prime time? We just heard from Greg that if you are a young person, you want to preserve your valve as much as you can, and is it the right thing to do for patients? Now if you look at degenerative MR in the community, you will see in this study done in Minnesota, a majority of the patients remain untreated, especially if they're slightly old. And if you see the patients with ejection fractions of 50% or more or less than 50%, those who live, remain untreated actually had a higher mortality. But these people could have surgery, but they're not undergoing surgery. Now, if you understand what is moderate surgical risk for primary or let's try to understand what is low risk and what is high risk. So a low risk defined by ACC is with an STS score of less than one with no frailty and no organ involvement, nothing, completely normal. And then you have a high risk category, which is graded as eight. So you have this whole group of patients between one and eight, which we don't know about, which is called the moderate risk patients. And we really don't have a great solution for them. Now let's look at the impact of age on mortality. If you look at, these are considered to be patients with isolated mitral repair. That means there are no other comorbidities. And you can see very few. What you can see is at the age of 75, there's a clear inflection of mortality, where it actually becomes doubles. So therefore, age is a strong predictor of morbidity and mortality, even in patients with primary MR. Now look at the STS database of 2019, and what do you see over here? That 
25% of the patients who underwent a surgical mitral repair had an STS score of greater than 1.2, which means you have a large cohort of patients with STSs 2 or 3 who actually are not being repaired at all. So you have this true admit need. And that leads us to the transcatheter repair for primary MR. So despite its safety and effectiveness in selected patients, primary MR, the uh, mitoclip has only been approved for super high-risk patients. And now we have over 150,000 patients with the clip. So the time has come to consider this. Now let's talk about the contemporary mitoclip results. If you look on the right side of the screen, what you see is the original Everest 2 data where you see that fifth, only 50% or less actually had one plus MR, and 80% had only two plus. But look at that same data set in the expand registry, which by the way, is all comers, not just selected patients. You can see at one year, 80% of these patients have become one plus. So what made the difference between Everest and expand? So the difference is number one, there's an improvement of the clip design. At that time, there was only one generation clip. Now you have four, you have different sizes, you have independent grippers. Number two is imaging. Imaging improved since 2005 till 2021. Number three is experience, that we learned what is good and what is bad not to do. And number three, which is a very sensitive topic that people don't like to admit, is operate experience. And you saw that in the French trial. And if you talk to investigators in the Mitre France trial, the average operator, repeat this, the average operator in the Mitre France trial had done less than five Mitre clips in their whole career. And Ilan knows that, that when they started the Mitre France trial, it was a new study, so it was not their fault, it was a new use of the therapy. So obviously the experience, and we know that repair requires experience. So we think that this, and this is now the contemporary outcomes on lower risk patients in the, in the expand registry. And you can see in this category of patients, 95% of patients have two plus or less MR. So we are actually getting better results than we did before. So going from this, we have decided to think about the real repair MR trial, which is basically comparing the outcome of patients versus surgical repair in moderate surgical risk patients have a mitral valve conducive to repair both surgically or by percutaneous approaches. And it's 500 patients, and this is what it's gonna be like. The subjects to be included are patients who are 75 years or older with no STS barriers. But if they're younger than 75, they should have a predicted or expected or mort uh, morbidity of around 2%. And then they get randomized one-to-one -one mitoclip versus surgical repair. The endpoints at two years, all cause mortality, stroke, or cardiac rehospitalization, very specific, or proportion of patients with greater than two plus MR without the need for replacement or without the need of another intervention. This results will be continued for 10 years. So the primary endpoint is at two years, but five years and then up to 10 years. There is another study called primary MR, which is an NIH-sponsored study, which is randomizing all comers at 65 years when stratified into low, intermediate, or high-risk tier versus clip. It's not mitoclip, any tier versus mitoclip, uh, any tier versus surgical repair. So this will include low-risk patients. And the idea is a superiority design. So my big question over here is this. It's time to demonstrate that the mitoclip is a reasonable option for selected patients of primary MR who are at moderate surgical risk. In the absence of this data, it seems unreasonable to randomize a healthy, low-risk 65-year-old patient with primary MR to clip versus surgical repair. The intermediate risk patients will be followed, and before we embark on lower risk, we should do that. A very fundamental concept that I say in the primary MR trial is that when you do a study, you compare an experiment versus control, right? And when you design a trial, you design a study to answer the question, is the experimental arm equal to the control or better? But you don't design a study to show that the experiment is worse than the control, correct? 
So for example, in the primary MR trial, which is a randomized trial of all comers, the goal is to show the hypothesis is surgery is superior to CLIP. So you get a young 65-year-old patient who's completely healthy with the primary MR, and you walk up to him and say, look, you can have surgical repair with a 99% standard of care. You can also get the CLIP through the trial. It's good, it's safe, it's effective. It's never proven to be as good as surgery. And we don't think it's better than surgery, but we just want to use you as a guinea pig to prove that. That's the study. So having said that, I would like to say, what's the next future? The concept of remote proctoring. Here's an example of me proctoring a case sitting in my pajamas at home and controlling a case in India. This is what we do. We can see this through proxy You can actually see every single image and control while the physician is actually doing the procedure. And this is an example of one of those patients, an 80-year-old male with refractory heart failure for eight months. He came in and heart failure. I was just helping. We helped the physician to put one to one clip. He reduced to trace MR. That's his left atrial pressure. With the V wave of 86, which dropped to 31, with a dramatic improvement of symptoms. Two weeks later, he sent me an SMS message. This is the result. Sir, it is now only two weeks since he's had a procedure. What all can a little clip do? It has been a cure of dyspnea, edema, kidney disease, and memory loss. My dad can sleep for the first time in 10 months. He can finally sleep. You don't need a clinical exam to prove that the patient has done very well. With this, like I conclude, transcatheter edge to edge repair using the MitoClip is here to stay. This therapy is rapidly being adopted worldwide. It is the standard of care for secondary MR. It is definitely an accepted treatment for high-risk primary MR. Ongoing clinical trials are hoping to establish this therapy as a treatment for tricuspid regurg and selected, I repeat, selected patients of moderate risk primary MR. Remote proctoring will help increase the safety and probably the procedural safety in different places. Thank you very much. Thanks, Saibal. Um, you know, let me ask you, um, you know, one of the problems I have with the CLIP, especially for lower risk patients with DMR, is that when the CLIP doesn't work, which it occasionally doesn't work, then it's, it's very, very challenging to repair the valve. Surgeons in that situation, greater than 90% of the time, have to replace the valve. Is there any solution for that you see upcoming electrocautery to remove the clip? Any, anything in the future? Yes, so there are, um, there are at the present moment uh, techniques developing to remove the clip and actually transcatheter wise and then using a valve replacement. Having said that, I still think that um, in a young primary MR patient, you should have the option to repair the valve. So if you reduce the repairability of the valve, uh, then that is a problem. Now, most people don't know, I actually have one of the largest experience of doing low-risk patients because of Everest too. And I've seen those patients after 15 years. Many of them have done well, few have had surgery. And uh, the, uh, last year I saw a patient who I did in 2006, uh, Raj and me had done the case in 2006, and she came up for follow-up, and she's only got mild to moderate MR, but she's developed AFib and she's now in mild heart failure. So I don't know what is the cause. So I really think that you're right, that um, it's, you know, but even a surgical repair is not that easy to re-repair. You have to say that it's not, it doesn't go both ways. So I still think that pure low-risk patients should not be in a trial right now. When I say moderate risk patients, like say a 75-year-old guy who's slightly, who's got a few uh, like lung problem, like the other day, I randomized a patient who went to surgical repair. He's 78 years old. He had a perfect repair. He has bilateral pleural effusion. He's been readmitted four times. So those are the group of patients which I think we should extend it to, not just probably risk. But not, I wouldn't go for a 55-year-old guy now. <clears throat> you know, the threshold to repair or replace after clip depends upon the substrate the surgeon is operating on. So, you know, if it's a young patient, Alfredo will actually go ahead and repair it. And he's done lots of patients where he's actually removed the clip and repair. 
But, you know, if somebody has multiple comorbidities and it's much older, the surgeons find little benefit in actually wasting, uh, you know, a lot of time. So I think, so the recent manuscript that came out of the STS database or the, um, you know, which, which suggested that if you have a clip, you have to replace the valve is not accurate. So I want to push you a little bit on those two intermediate trials that are underway. Because I, I kind of have problems with both of them. <laughs> the uh, repair MR trial, that is the Abbott-sponsored trial, um, has an endpoint of two plus or less MR for intermediate risk patients. And one could argue that for the high intermediate risk patient, maybe that's okay. But for the low intermediate risk patient, maybe that's not quite okay as an endpoint. And you know, is that just a trial that's designed to get an indication? Or is it really going to answer the question of whether what's best for the patient? And on the primary MR side, the problem I have is that it's mixing low, intermediate, and high-risk patients with very different endpoints. That trial is designed to show the superiority of surgery for MR reduction, which I'm happy to grant right now today. I don't need a trial, especially a large NIH-sponsored you know, multi-million dollar trial to tell me that surgery reduces MR better than the CLIP does. And in the, low in, in the low risk patient, I want the MR reduction. In the very high risk patient, maybe I'm less concerned about that and I don't want the risks of surgery, which some of which aren't included in the endpoint. And so there's a lot of bias in that trial that my surgeons, for instance, say, oh, I'm never gonna enroll a low risk patient. And I say to my surgeon, I'm never gonna enroll a high risk patient. And so we're gonna have all these biases in this trial of trying to mix and match low, intermediate, and high risk patients for an outcome that isn't really about all the risks of surgery. It's about showing that surgery reduces MR better than the clip, which I already know. So, Javi, I, I think your comments question, are good. Let question, and clarify the two plus MR criteria. Okay. So, uh, the endpoint of repair MR is a is the number. This has two endpoints. Okay. The first endpoint is a truly clinical endpoint. The truly clinical endpoint is death cardiovascular rehospitalizations beyond 30 days, there's a blanking period, and the need for a surgery or repair, okay? The second endpoint is the occurrence of more than two plus MR at two years or the need for replacement or a need for reintervention. So we're not taking it away. Now, why, why did we say less than two plus? Because if you have, let's say, two plus MR at two years, you're not going to operate on the patient, right? Two plus is not an indic threshold for uh, operation. The threshold for reintervention is three plus. And the reason for doing that is that if we said two plus was okay, the surgeon would randomize all the patients, he'd randomize them to surgical replacement. He'll have zero MR at two years, he'll say he wins. But that's what you want. You want a clinical outcome, right? And MR, by the way, two plus MR at two years is not an endpoint, it's a surrogated endpoint. If you're two plus MR and you're running in marathons, it's okay. Let me expand on that because Howie, I would throw it, I would actually agree with what Seibel said, but even more forcefully. Why in this modern era are we ever including an endpoint like two plus MR in an endpoint? That two plus MR is not keeping patients awake at night, okay? Uh, and as Seibel said, we don't operate on any patient or do any mitroclip procedure or anything on 2 plus MR. And it's very, very old data to suggest that that may be harmful for patients. In, you know, the paper that Seibel published from the COAP trial, there was no statistically significant difference in functional MR from, right. So we need to learn that. So if there is such a major difference from having residual 1 to 2 plus MR versus 0 to trace MR, then we need a trial that's adequately powered to show that difference. It'd be similarly, if we do a PCI versus cabbage trial, and I say if we have a 30% graft stenosis or a 30% restenosis, should we count that as an endpoint? No, it'd be ludicrous. But your but trial is, is, not, is not powered to show the difference between 2 plus MR and 0 to 1 plus MR at two years for no, clinical endpoints. I, how we just Point. Uh, first of all, let's go back to the data. Why is why did this two plus MR come to you? Surgeons have shown, not in very well clinical trials, that if you leave two plus MR or more at discharge, then if you follow these patients over periods of time, they do badly. Okay. 
But we also did the same analysis for primary MR in, in, in the Everest 2 trial data, realism. And if you're left with 2 plus versus 1 plus, over five years, you actually do slightly worse if you're 2 plus. But however, if you look at patients who are left with 2 plus MR at one year, and then you followed them with a landmark analysis for five years, there was no difference. You got it? So if you're left with 2 plus, at discharge is very different from somebody who's 2 plus at one or two years, because then they've stabilized. Because you know that, that Harvey, that actually uh, the MitoGrip data shows that when beyond six months, they actually have been very stable. In fact, you can go back and say the Everest 2 trial is the only trial which actually showed there was no difference in mortality between surgery and CLIP at five years. There was no difference. So, so Saibal, then, to dwell on that, why are you so reluctant to include patients that are more than 65 years of age? CLIP is so safe. And you showed all the data with G4 uh, in the imaging improvement that we have 90 plus percentage of really good repair with the CLIP. I, I think that's a good enough argument to actually, rather than wait for 10 years that, you know, and, and wait for your data to actually go ahead and study these patients because the risk is so low of this technology. Raj, the motive of the study is completely different. You're not realizing that. If you are going in with a study, telling you, whenever you go with a study with a hypothesis, you have to have a hypothesis. What is the hypothesis of the primary MR trial? See, I think that there is skillful um, gaming, if you want to call it, right? I mean, the, the goal there is to say, okay, you're actually putting surgeons in a box in a corner here. You're saying, okay, you guys say that surgery is better. Okay, show it. And then when it is not better, we're not going to be able to say it is not inferior. All that you're going to be able to say is that surgery is not better. So I think this is yeah, this, no. this is, if, this is if a if study you don't show design. That, Raj, if you don't show A is greater than B, it doesn't mean that B is better than A. And as Howie said, that's exactly what's going to happen in the trial. Is that he won't randomize a low-risk patient, right, the surgeon, and he won't randomize the high-risk patient. So what are you left with? Intermediate risk patient, which is the repair MR. So it's the same Last comment on this, I'll make the last comment. I would agree with that um, trial. I, I think it'd be fine to randomize low and intermediate risk patients, but the hypothesis should be to prove non-inferiority, uh, not to try to do the gold standard, which currently is surgery, to see if maybe that's not going to win. So that I agree with Cybo 100% on that.